Hello and welcome to the ninth in a series of videos from Yellow Crane Tai Chi. My name is Harold and in this video we'll be looking at the sequence of move called Grasping the Sparrow's Tail. Grasping Sparrow's Tails consists of four moves rather than being one move in and of itself. These four moves are the cornerstones of Tai Chi. They're called Pung, Lu, Ji and An and have been translated into English as Ward Off, Roll Back, Press and Push. As usual, we'll be starting off with the leg movements. We've done all these movements before in the form, but in this time we're just going to change the sequence and do a few different things than normal. Like many of the other moves in the Tai Chi form, we start off by shifting our weight on one leg and turning to the corner. Getting into our just right stance, feet parallel, knees bent, sitting down, shoulders roll forward, head up. Shifting our weight over onto our left leg, pivoting on the hip and the heel of the right foot to point into the corner. Like all the other moves, we shift our weight forward onto the right leg. From here, I'm going to turn back onto my left leg with all my weight on that leg, but I'm not going to turn my right foot in like I normally do. So I end up here. From here, I'm going to turn back to the corner using the hip pivot. But because my toes are already pointing out there, I don't have to pick them up. The problem is because my toes are already down, this makes this move a little bit harder on the hips. So when you're doing it, it's always advisable to sit down a little bit as you're turning, like this. From here, I'll shift my weight forward as usual. So I'm now on my right leg again. I'm going to sit straight back and as I sit back I'm going to pick up the toes of the right foot so that they're pointing towards the ceiling. This stops my ankle getting damaged because I'm pulling back on the leg. So from this position I just put my foot down and shift my weight as I would normally do in the other moves. To finish off I simply come back to the middle like I would do before. And of course, we do all that again on the other side. Shift onto the right foot, pivot the left heel and the left hip. Put the foot down, shift the weight forward. Shift back across to your right leg, don't bring your foot in. Drop the hip and turn back towards the left corner. Shift your weight forward. Come straight back, picking up the toes as you come back. Put the toes down again, shift into the corner, and then finally come back to the middle. Now that we've looked at the leg work, we're going to do the hands separately. The first arm movement of grasping Sparrow's tails starts very similarly to parting the wild horse's mane, in that we start in a ball holding position. So, finding our ball, and holding a ball with the right hand on the bottom. So like in Grasping Sparrow's Tail, the left hand strokes the dog. In Grasping Sparrow's Tails, however, the right arm comes up like you're hugging someone so that your hand is in front of you, like this. So both hands together, left hand strokes the dog, Right hand just rolls up in front of you like you're hugging someone. So left hand down, right hand up like you're hugging someone. So from here, I simply straighten out my right arm so that it points in front of me. And I swing my left arm up a little bit like what we did in Golden Cockerel, stands on one leg, so that it points into the right wrist like this. So straightening the right arm, left arm comes up to point into the right wrist. From here, I'm going to bring my left hand down to my left hip, turning it so that my palm is now facing towards the ceiling. The right hand follows it down until it's in front of your belly button. It's going to take the same quarter turn in the same direction as your left hand. 
So in this occasion, that's going to be anti-clockwise. So the move goes like this. So in this position, my left hand feels a lot like it did in Repulse Monkey. So I do exactly what I did in Repulse Monkey and let my left arm swing out to the side. Unlike Repulse Monkey, I'm not going to bring my hand in like I was doing some swimming. I'm just going to let it swing all the way around until it lands on my right wrist, like this. From here, I want to have my forearms parallel to my ribs. I do that by rolling my right arm with my left hand as I push it slightly forward, like this. This means that my right palm is facing towards me and my left palm is inside my right wrist. So in close up, it's like this. From here, I simply extend my arms out in front of me so my hands are pointing forward, palms to the ground. So from here, I want to bring my hands back so they're closer to my body without dropping my elbows. So I imagine I have a rolling pin in my hand so that it comes back a little bit like this. From here, I simply push my hands down to my hips. From here, I swing my arms up from my shoulders to the position I know from a pulse monkey and brush knee push step. The idea is it feels like you're opening up one of those old fashioned doctor's desks that have a little shutter that pulls over the top of them, a bit like this. So now the first sequence on the left hand side. So hold the ball. Right hand strokes a dog, left hand swings up. Straighten the left arm, bring up the right arm. Roll the hands back down to your waist. Right hand swings out to the side, lands on the left wrist. The hands come up so that the hand is on the inside of the wrist. Push forward. Separate hands, come back, push down, and swing up. So on one side, hold the ball. Stroke the dog, roll the arm up. Straighten out the arm, roll back. Swing the hand out to the side, land on the wrist. Bring the hands up, turn them over, push out. Bring back, push down, and swing up. So one hand strokes the dog, the other hand hugs. One arm straightens, the other follows up. Turning and coming down to the waist. Arm extends out to the side, lands on the other wrist. Turning over, pushing, separating the hands, bring them back, pushing down, and swinging So now we do the usual thing of putting the legs and the arms together to do the complete move. Grasping Sparrow's Tail isn't an individual move. It's actually made up of four different moves that are called Pung, Lu, Ji and An. So instead of doing the whole sequence in one go, I will show you each of the four moves individually and then do the sequence of Grasping Sparrow's Tail at the end. The first move in Grasping Sparrow's Tail is Pung. This is translated into English as Ward Off. It starts the same way as parting the wild horse's mane, so let's get ready and hold our ball so we can do the move. Starting in our just right stance, feet parallel, knees bent, sitting down, relaxed shoulders, head up. Come to our halfway up position, and we're going to turn into the right corner. So we shift our weight over onto our left leg and pivot on the right heel ending up with the right hand at the bottom holding a ball. So similar to parting wild horse's mane, I'm going to shift my weight forward and stroke out with my left hand. But on this occasion, my right hand just comes up 
in a circle so it ends up in front of me, like this. So from the side, So from the side, pivoting makes me hold the ball simply by shifting forward. My hand comes up, my other hand wipes out to the side. The next move in the sequence is Lou, which is translated as roll back. And in the move, we actually literally roll backwards onto our other leg. So starting from my pong position, I'm going to straighten my hands out in front of me. From here, I do the actual roll back. So as I sit back and turn, I let my hands roll down so they end up at my waist. From here, I just let my left arm swing out all the way around and back down until it lands on my right wrist. I always think of Elvis Presley when I'm doing this move for some reason. So from one side, you can see me straighten my arms out. And then I roll back and let my arms swing around. But from the other side, whilst you can't see the hand straightening out, you can clearly see the other hand swinging towards the camera and coming back round. So after we've done Pong and Lu, we come to G. This was translated as press in the beginning, but this has caused slight confusion because in America, pressing is what you do to fruit to get the juice out of it, whereas in European countries, we say squeeze. So whilst the terminology is press, the idea is more squeeze. So G begins where Lu ends. What we do here is the little hip twist to the corner and the rolling and squeezing in the hands, like this. To finish G, we simply shift our weight forward, squeezing our hands until they can't stay together, and then they separate out forward. So from the side, pivot and turn the hands, shift forward, separate. Last of all, we have an, which is translated as push. Hence the use of squeeze for G because push and press can be a little bit confusing. So we start an off at the end of G. This is where we're going to sit back and bring our hands towards our shoulders. So I bring my weight over onto my left leg and do this. From here, it feels like I'm actually pushing my foot back down on the ground. And to finish everything off, I shift my weight forward as my arms swing up. So now I'm going to do the moves on the other side, but do them as a complete sequence. So you can learn them on one side and the other before putting them back into the form. So for my ready stance, our hands come up and we hold the ball on our right leg. Shifting our weight forward, arm comes up, stroking the dog, pong. We begin low by straightening our arms out, rolling back onto the other leg. Let the hand swing and land on the other wrist. We twist the body to come into G and shift our weight forward to finish. Sitting back into an, dropping and lifting. There's a lovely little story around why this sequence is called Grasping Sparrow's Tales, and it's a mnemonic to help you remember the sequence of the moves. It basically relates to the thing where Chinese people had birds as pets for a long time. Occasionally, they would even be considered as bling. Look, I've got a better bird than you do. So the story goes, you've bought a new bird and you need to put it in your big cage. So I'll show you the sequence with the little story about putting the bird into the cage. 
So if I think at the start of the move and cut and mark. So at the start of the move, what I'm doing is holding a bird cage. So getting into posture, holding the ball. Now, my left hand is holding the top of the bird cage. My right hand is on the door of the bird cage. So what I'm actually doing in this first move is I'm opening the bottom of the bird cage and then placing the bird cage down as my little bird escapes into the room like this. Now, what I want to do from here is beckon the little bird back. So I reach for the bird. The bird then lands on my wrist. So I bring it down so I can have a look at the bird. What I want to do is make sure it doesn't get away. So I put my hand on the top of the bird. Now I want to let the bird go. So I want to grasp its tail. So turning the hand over takes my hand off the bird and onto its tail. So the bird is sitting on my wrist and I'm holding its tail feathers. I bring the bird over to my large aviary cage and what I'm doing is, is by coming forward and letting go of the tail, the bird can go into the cage. Again, Chinese bird cages for some reason have the doors at the bottom. So I need to reach back, take the door of the cage, push it down so that it can click into place underneath. So I'm going to quickly show you the turnover move to get from one side to the other. So we can then finish off with doing a few repetitions. So Anne has me with my hands up like this. What I want to do is come back to the middle with just straight hands in front of me. A bit like a zombie. To turn to the other leg, I then shift the weight onto the leg I came out of and hold the ball. So I can then continue the sequence on the other side. Coming back into the middle and changing. So to finish off, I'm only going to do three repetitions, remembering that there are four moves here. So we're actually doing much more than we did in the other videos. And if you do want to do more, that's what the rewind button is for. So from my just right position, feet parallel, knees bent. Sat down, shoulders relaxed, head on top of the shoulders. From our halfway up, halfway down position, I hold the ball on my left leg. Shifting my weight forward, I raise my right hand, stroke with the left. Extending both hands forward, bringing the hands down to the waist. The left arm swings out, lands on the right wrist. Pivoting and rolling the hands, shift weight into the corner. Setting back, push down and lift. So I behave like a zombie to come into the middle and hold my ball on my right leg. So I'm coming up, pung. Lu G and An. So coming back through the middle, I have my little bird. I open its cage. I beckon it over. I look at my little bird. I hold it. Then I let it go and close the cage, hold the bird, open the cage, catch the bird, and let it go, and close the cage. So finishing off, Pong, Lu, G and R. Uh. 
Grasping Spyro's Tails completes our sequence of moves for the form. So in the next video, we're going to look at the connecting moves for the last part of the form and how to do the form in its entirety. If you'd enjoy this video and find the information useful, please consider liking our videos and also subscribing to our channel. It would be very helpful to us because it means we can bring out more videos and more information about Tai Chi. I've been Harold from Yellow Crane Tai Chi. Thanks for watching.